Good evening and welcome to our um, webinar where we are talking about the Hillbrook Upper School Athletic Program. My name is Mark Silver, I'm the head of school and we are so excited to have so many people with us here tonight to have an opportunity to meet our new athletic director, Tim Downs, and to um, learn a little bit more about what we envision for the athletic program, um, both next year and in the years ahead. Um, this is part of a series, um, and hopefully some of you have come to others as well. We had earlier webinars, including one on college counseling, um, a webinar on social impact learning, and then a wonderful session where we had a chance to hear from some students who had been, or adults who were at the time students who had been founders at Nueva. Um, all of those webinars are available um, if uh, people want to see those, and we and we will uh, we can we will continue to make those available for people who missed those. Um, for tonight, uh, the the star of the show is Tim Downs, who um, we have recently hired our third hire and uh, athletic director from um, Westminster School in Atlanta, um, where uh, one of the top athletic schools in the country. Prior to that, Tim served as an athletic director at several universities, including Emory University and Caltech. Um, and uh, if you go way back in college, he was a four-year lacrosse player at Dartmouth, um, and then later earned a JD from Washington Lee University. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to ask Tim to turn on his video and welcome. Welcome, Tim. It's great to see you. Uh, thank you, Mark. It's it's a and and so that so that people know, um, Tim is also three hours ahead. So so he, this is he's he's doing us the, the great service at ten o'clock at night. Um, the, for the for kids that probably doesn't sound late for those for those of us who are adults, it's past our bedtime. But thanks for thanks for staying up a little bit late tonight, Tim, and 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 joining us here on the West Coast. So <laughs> glad to be here, Mark. Yeah. So um, before we jump in, um, I just want to you know I trust that you have been watching or at least paying attention to the biggest sporting event in the world um, and so i'm wondering you know any thoughts on the world cup well you know so this one is different because um it's the first one that that i can remember that hasn't been in the summer yes and it you know especially last week which was a quiet week i was glued to the tv so waking up and just plopping myself down on the couch and watching Till the very end of the matches and it has been such great soccer but you know i think what i have kind of marveled at and we know but um you know how this sport can bring a community together and really rally people around something and you know we've seen it locally that um you know when the u.s played on monday and we were back in school i mean classes stopped and everyone gathered together and just to feel that sense of pride in in your country and and in your school. And you know, that's what high school athletics is about. So it was wonderful to see that. And then more globally, just how sport can bring people together. And you know, that can have its good things and bad things. But it, it really pointed out for me, you know, just the power of sport. Nice. Yeah. And and of course, I we don't we don't have to dive too deeply, but obviously there's some interesting like uh social issues surrounding you know and and certainly some social impact issues social justice issues surrounding and complexity um sur surrounding this particular world cup but um i i, I saw, it sounds like you had a similar experience we, we didn't we didn't stop class but we did have to, we did have a, a tvs out and a bunch of students gathered around for you know part of lunch to to watch the game and i'm just regretting that it's all happening during the day um as i'm missing yeah because i because i like you last week i was just sitting there glued and this week i've been trying to as much as possible occasionally you know catch a glimpse of what's happening in various games <laughs> well I, I hope i didn't put you in a bad spot by telling everyone on this call that we actually stopped classes. <laughs> well, if we, if we get to the quarter, what is it, quarterfinals next week, we might have to do that. Okay. So, so um, you know, we, you know, I, I started by you know, kind of sharing about your resume, but I'd love for, for you to share a little bit, um, you know, what are some things that you'd want people to know that uh, maybe they don't know be, beyond kind of the obvious things that we talked about in the resume? Well, and, you know, where you started and worked back to was Dartmouth College, but um, it, what I've been giving a lot of thought to over the last three weeks was what happened before that. And, and so I, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and I went to a small private school called St. Paul's. And, you know, I was there for 13 years. And my brothers both went there for 13 years. And my mom taught there. 
And, and when I think about that experience and how it will relate to the work that we're about to enter into, you know, it, it, it really felt like a progression from lower school to middle school to upper school and how great that was and that kind of continuity in education and friendship and athletics. And um, I think that's really important. And I, and I love the idea that we'll be able to bring that to Hillbrook. And, you know, the piece in terms of athletics that I think is really relevant, we were small. I had 38 in my graduating class. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we still, we had one of the best lacrosse teams in the country. And what that small number allowed me to do was to try a lot of different things. And, and you know, some I was terrible at and some I, you know, did pretty well. Um, but, you know, playing a bunch of sports and, and being the, um, on the newspaper and running for, you know, student government, all of those things, you know, the small size allowed me to do that. And um, that, that's what I'm really excited about, um, you know, with Hillbrook is that we're going to provide a lot of opportunities. And, um, you know, similar in what, what I loved about Dartmouth and the liberal arts education was, um, you know, it teaches you a lot of things and a lot of life lessons. And I think, uh, you know, over time, I found that to be really valuable. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And you, we have, yeah, we have never talked about it. I didn't realize that you would go, it makes so much sense now, but growing up in a school that was a lot like Hillbrook. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and you know, the other thing I mentioned to this, this to you and to Mike, that I, I do tout myself as the best surfer in Atlanta. <laughs> so that's going to, you know, that title will end pretty soon. You know, it's, it's good. You, I, I, I did know that about you. I know you, you, were, you were very excited about the surfing possibilities. Yeah. Come yeah, you're, 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 you get a, you get a, it'll be a lot easier to surf here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so as, as you know, I mean, and, and we talked about throughout the process, I mean, we had an incredibly deep pool of candidates, um, you know, both some great people locally, people like you nationally, we even had a couple of international candidates. Um, and that was like really struck by how much excitement this posting generated. Um, what drew you initially to this position? Well, I, I'd say you had you had me at the word founding, <laughs> and um, it, you know, I, it, it, with all my jobs, I've had an opportunity to build things and build on things. But you're working within an existing culture, and so with that will become some breaking down and some, um, it, you know, some challenges around that. And, you know, this idea to be able to build it from scratch and to be with people and, and kind of share that experience with people that are very like-minded, that, that feels like a once in a lifetime for me. And I, I think the timing for me also felt perfect because, you know, I've worked at a lot of great places and I've worked with a lot of great people and to be able to take all of those experiences and bring them to bear um, it, it just, it, it felt really right for me. And I, I tell you what, the last two weeks since we've made the announcement um, and the congratulations that I've received from within this community, it's been really heartening. And I think it's, it, it is because of that, is people see what I really love doing and they see this as that opportunity and kind of th that perfect kind of next step for me. Yeah, tell me more about that. So like, what, what do you think people see? What was it they see you loving that you do? Well, I, and I think it is that building and it's, you know, it's kind of that creativity and, and we've done a lot of that here, which I think has really set our program apart in terms of, you know, we, we really don't focus that much on the X's and O's. We focus a lot on the development of students and coaches and, um, it, it, and, you know, that has been from what I've seen. And a lot of that, I just, you know, I brought from um, higher education and I see that's where secondary schools are going. So um, a, a lot of schools are going to be moving into that. But um, I, I think everyone saw that that's, you know, that's what I truly love doing and kind of bringing um, people together around new initiatives and, and um, building towards things. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, you know, so, you know, obviously like there was this concept of Hillbrook um, that was that drew in and not necessarily Hillbrook itself but the concept of a founding position you know and then you started to learn more about Hillbrook you started to spend some time in the community and and, and obviously you don't know us well yet but you know us a little bit better what are things that have struck you 
as you've gotten to know the school a little bit that are specific to Hillbrook that, that are then, you know, making you super excited about being the athletic director for these, you know, as a founder? You know, my day on campus, um, and you all are in it. So, I, you know, what I'm about to say, I think you probably take for granted but you really do live your values. And, and so, it, you know, it was really interesting for me in that day um, because I had some context with other places of people really do care about each other and people really do, I, I, I think, you know, they really believe in the be kind. And um, I, I felt that in a very real way. And there wasn't, any one thing that I would point to, it was just a, it was a general feeling throughout the day. And I, I do want you all to know that, you know, that is felt and that feels unique and really important. And I love that. Um, but I would say probably the most influential meeting that I had that day was my very last one with um, our eighth grade students. And, you know, what I took away from that, obviously, they, they love sports, and they're really interested, but, but, you know, their love of sports and how that's going to play in um, their decision on what to do next, um, that, that, you know, it made me pivot a little bit. Mm. And, uh, again, I understood the importance of it, um, but what that told me is there's a real responsibility here and a real responsibility to do this right. And um, that really excited me. Oh, that's great. And, and just so, uh, so people know, we, we do have several eighth graders who are going to um, join us in about 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, and ask some questions of Tim. And then um, I should also add, at any point tonight, if people have questions, please feel free to, to throw them into the questions, and, and we'll do our best to, to answer them over the course of the evening. Um, so, you know, now, now you're hired, you know, um, you don't, affi you know, you don't full-time start until July, but certainly there's some work that you'll be doing with us over the spring. And then obviously you'll really hit the ground running. Like, what do you see as like the like top three or four priorities um, in the next really year, you know, to get the athletic program off on the right foot? Yeah. And it, it, it honestly, it's been really, really hard for me um, not to have this front of mind. And um and it, it, it's great. It really is. And, and, you know, I think the obvious ones are in working with um, yourself and with Mike and, and other community members on, you, you know, what sports are we going to sponsor in the early years and making sure that fits with our enrollment and our interest. And then with the opportunity as enrollment grows um, and interest, you know, may shift or as interests develop to make sure that we're really forward thinking there, that we, we have the right sports that'll meet the needs and, and um, that, that will be sustainable. Um, I, I, you know, I, again, I think that's the obvious one. And then, you know, finding the facilities, building out the facilities that will meet those, um, those sports needs and, and interests. Um, it, you know, and I've worked at places where we've had um, great facilities and places where we haven't had much in the way of facilities. Um, the, but, you know, when you have great coaches and great staff members, that makes all the difference in the world. And so the hiring of coaches and staff um, and spending a lot of time and thought on that, that that's going to be, um, you know, top priority. It really, it really will be, um, you, you know, great people make the difference. Um, you know, and and one thing I will say, so th those are the obvious. The one that might not be as obvious, but I think is the most important thing is to make sure that everything, that, start right away, that everything we're doing connects back to the educational mission of Hillbrook. Um, it, it's very easy to get distracted when you have examples of club sports or college sports or professional sports. Um, you know, this is different. And you need to build in some discipline around that, that making sure that this is, um, this is an extension of our students' education. And if you do things the right way, you will have success. Um, but it's easy to get distracted with that. So starting from, you know, from day one, um, having those conversations, building those values with everything we do, um, making sure that this is an incredibly inclusive program um, from the start is going to going to be 
um, you know, that's going to be number one for me. So I'm curious, like, and obviously, you know, so Westminster, as, as we, as we have been, you know, sharing with people and, you know, usually like, you know, the number one school top max in the country, you know, clearly an, an athletic powerhouse. How has at, at, at Westminster, like, how have you managed that? And, and maybe that may help give us some insight into what that might look like at Hillbrook. <laughs> Well, you know, we are the top athletic program in the country because this is the top academic school in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. And so um, we will attract very motivated students. And, um, you know, we'll have more multi-sport athletes than any other schools in, in the state. And then we also sponsor more sports than any other school in the state um, because we want to give that breadth of um, participation and opportunity and we want our students and you know we're one of the few schools in the state that does not have spring football um, mm -hmm. because all of our you know fall football players are playing another sport in the spring and you know we set up our program so you'll go from one sport to another to another um, you know we're the only school in the southeast with squash and, and rowing and um, you, you know that that says a lot about, you know, how we've, we're in this era of specialization. Um, you know, that, that's the discipline that you need to build in. And that's the, um, it, it, you know, I, I mentioned to you the day I was there, we have 120 girls on our cross country team. And at the beginning of the season, coach has them right on sticky, sticky notes, um, what they'd like to get out of the season. And you put them up um, they put them up on the wall. So that you, you've got 200, you know, sticky notes and it's all about community and sisterhood and everything. And, and um, there might be two or three about winning a state championship. Um, they've won, you know, I, I think seven or eight straight state championships. Um, it, and so it, it does speak to you know, if you focus on the right things, you're going to have the success. If you focus on the success, you, you, you know, you probably won't get there. So, and I'm sure, you know, there's probably, I'm sure at least one person listening here is like, well, you know, how, how's Hobart going to win seven state championships if we only have freshmen next year? Talk a little bit about like, you know, what, what is that ramp? Up? And I think to your point, right, like in the end, it isn't necessarily measured by whether or not we win state championships, but clearly our goal is to be competitive. Can you make sense of that? Like, or, you know, to, to somebody who's going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to preemptively ask that question because I'm, I'm guessing at least somebody out there is wondering it. Well, uh, you know, that's what I am so excited about because you can build it, you know, in the right way from the start. And, and I think, you know, and again, this goes back to the discipline piece. Um, a lot of our ninth grade students, they want to be on varsity, right? And they're not ready for that. They might be, you know, good enough athletes, but are they ready, you know, kind of physically and, and socially and emotionally? You know, probably not. So, um, you know, the, the way that we're going to do things is going to require patience. And, it, you know, when you have that patience, that's kind of that built-in discipline. And, um, and, and also, it is more about... And what I love is, you know, our students are going to be able to try a lot of things and they are going to become better athletes. And, and you know, the sports specialization piece that, that will come outside of Hillbrook. And that's, you know, that's what we rely on here. Um, but, you know, we'll work on the other things and we'll, you know, we'll just make them better athletes and better people. Yeah, and that, I mean, one of the questions, and again, you and I have talked quite a bit about this, you know, we have a number of um, our graduates who've gone on to play college athletics, um, you know, certainly, obviously, you do at Westminster as well. Um, and I know there are kids who are in our eighth grade right now, or seventh grade, you know, looking over the next couple of years, we're like, I want to make sure I can play college sports. Like, so what trends are you seeing for high school athletes across the country? And then what would you tell a student or a family that's like, great, you know, the high school sounds great, but, you know, my my son or daughter wants to play college XYZ, they'll never make it if they go to Hillbrook. Right. Well, in, in some of the trends that I've seen, um, and, and this connects to in, enrollment and admissions, so, you know, probably the last 10, 15 years, the club sport um, industry, and it really is an industry, you know, it's a billion dollar industry. 
and um, things have developed. And, and, and I, I tell our families here that just remember that's all about, they're all about their bottom line. And again, they, they'll develop you as an athlete, but really they're, they, they need to make money doing that. So that's where our role is going to be very different. And I think very important in this whole process. Um, but the club sport industry is really, it, it, uh, you know, in the whole recruiting has moved to club sports. So with the exception of football that stayed fairly scholastic in the recruiting, every other sport, you know, it's done early and it's done outside the school. Um, so that, that's definitely been a shift over the last 10 or 15 years. I'd say more recently has been, you know, coming through the pandemic um, and just how the whole college enrollment admissions has been turned upside down. And, you know, that might straighten itself out, but I'll, I'll give you an example um, that's close to home here. University of Georgia, um, they can't, you know, they've lost so many staff members in their admissions office mm -hmm. that they can't read all the applications for early decision. And so they're making decisions, uh, only reading maybe a half to three quarters of their application pool. And so what used to be kind of an understood or more consistent is totally an inconsistent thing now. And, and so you just don't know. And so what I've seen, because you don't know, is parents are looking and, and students are looking, okay, can athletics be, can that give me an edge in the process? What, what else can I do? So that really has shifted kind of that counsel back to the school. Um, and, I'll, and I'll also say, um, and, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit more, but um, the, it, I think everyone's probably heard of the transfer portal um, in colleges, and it, it's just allowed students to move more freely between colleges and universities. And I know Stanford's received a lot of criticism with their football team because they haven't really tapped into that. Um, what I have seen that do, not just for football and basketball, but for all sports, is college coaches are relying on that. Um, a lot more and spending a lot more time on that than they might have in recruiting high school students in the past. Um, so take those two things. Admissions world is turned upside down. The transfer portal, coaches aren't necessarily getting into clubs or, or high school students as much as they were. There is a, there's a real need for self-promotion of student athletes. And um, that's where we can do so much one-on-one -on -one work with our students and our families and really guide them through that process, use all the people that we know um, in the college, you know, in the college coaching ranks to really push that and make sure we have an academic component of that in there. And um, just to make sure our, you know, the club coaches are going to send you to places that'll make their club look good and hopefully generate more business. Um, we want to find the best fit school for our students. And that's that's building in all those other elements. And I get it, 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 implicit in that answer, I guess, is also that, and I'm sure you've had to do this at Westminster, and I, we certainly would do it here, is, is you're also to some degree going to be partnering with clubs. I mean, like, you know, any of these students who are going off to play college sports are still connected to their clubs. Absolutely. Right? So, yeah. So no, it goes and, a... Yeah, and we absolutely encourage that. And, and you know, you, you asked a question about, all right, so if I go to Hillbrook, am I not going to get into, um, you know, am I not going to be a recruited student athlete? Um, and I, I, I think it's the exact opposite because, you know, as I mentioned, most of the recruiting has moved to the clubs. Um, and, you know, if college coaches are going anywhere, they're going, they're going there. You know, I think we had, I think it was eight girls commit to division one schools in soccer before they even played on our varsity team. So, you know, again, that minimizes the role somewhat, but, you know, what I've also seen with um, college coaches, and I remember Ohio State won a football championship a few year, years back, and, and the coach there um, was touting that it was probably close to 90% of the students on their team played more than one sport in mm -hmm. high school. And college coaches like that. They're looking for athletes. They're looking for students that they feel they can mold into their program. And, uh, you know, I also, if we're talking about, and, you know, finding an edge, 
you know, being able to put on your resume and application that you were part of the first class at Hillbrook, you know, that's going to look really, really good. I mean, that's, that's something in an admissions office that they're going to look at that and say that's real. And um, so, I, you know, the opportunity to come in and play a lot of sports, become a great athlete, be a leader and show leadership and do something very unique like that. Um, well, I'd jump at that. I really would. That's great. Thanks. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring in, I'm um, to, uh, Gulliver Lavage, um, the head of our head of middle school. Um, hey, Gully. Um, and Gully is going to um, facilitate a conversation with our students. Um, here you Tim, great to see you again. Gully, how are you? Good. So I know before we bring the students in, um, Tim, since the moment you've been hired, the question has been, what is your walk-up song? I think we are all waiting in angst to know what it is and, and why. <clears throat> okay, so you know why this question is great? That when I had dinner, it was my first night in San Jose, I had dinner with Mark and Mike, I asked them that question. And I think it was because, um, Mark, remind me, we were at a place where there was like a, it was like a piano. <laughs> it's a very loud piano, yes. <laughs> there was a very loud piano. So I think that's what sparked the conversation. I have to, I, I can't really remember what Mark and Mike said, but I think their songs were pretty lame. Um, and mine would be, and, and after I tell you this, I need to do some explaining, is um, Little John turned down for what? And the explaining is, so if you listen to the lyrics and if you, you listen not so closely, it kind of sounds like Tim Downs for what? <laughs> and there were some students at Emory who thought they heard the same thing. And they gave me a hashtag of hashtag Tim Downs for what? And it actually turned into a t-shirt. And that was my first and only hashtag. And um, I've had a couple t-shirts, but... Um, so I'm pretty fond of that song. Oh, that's great. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to have to play that one for the community later. All for right. Sure. <laughs> Mine was a lot more simple. Just we are the champions queen. Love but it. Um, yeah, you're going to get to learn walk up songs for all our students over the next year. So without further ado, Chloe, Edwin, Josh, Gavin, Shyla, if you all can unmute and and uh, turn your cameras on. All right. Thank you. Everyone can hear Shyla. I think you're still muted, Josh. Great. All right, so Tim, we're gonna have an opportunity now for our eighth graders um, to ask you some questions. And we are gonna start uh, with Edwin. Okay, um, first, Nice to meet you. And um, my question is, what was your favorite sport that you competed in when you were a kid? Well, you, you know, I remember, and, and I remember this so well, and I hope you all are, are doing this. I mean, I would be outside after school until it would get dark, just playing everything, you know, in the backyard with my brothers. And um, so I, I loved a lot of sports. I, I gravitated towards in high school, soccer and lacrosse, and then lacrosse ended up being my sport. And, you know, being from Baltimore and, and Baltimore really is the home of lacrosse. And um, I, it gave me a good sense of where I fit nationally um, in the sport. And, and it really, you know, it felt like um, to be able to go to the best possible school I could um, and to play my sport, that was gonna be the sport um, that I played. So um, I, I loved it. It was going to, you know, help me in my education. And it was a really important part of, uh, of my education. Um, but I, I tell you what, I just, I, I love being out there just playing um, everything. Thank you. Uh, Chloe, you are next. All right. Okay. So we have four core values at the school be kind be curious take risks and be your best I was wondering how you plan on incorporating those into the high school athletics program 
I love that. Um, you know, the, the be kind, I, I think that, I mean, that's part of being a team, right? And, and a good teammate. And, um, you know, what I love about sports is that, you, you know, you need to play by rules and that, that creates integrity and, and, um, and also I think being kind is that, that's sportsmanship. And, um, you know, being kind to teammates and coaches and opponents and officials and fans, um, that, that's all a part of it. Um, you know, the, the be curious and take risks, you know, that's, that's what I love about this opportunity is that, um, you know, there, there are going to be great opportunities for our students to play a sport maybe they've never played before, or try something they've never tried. And, and to do that in public, that's pretty risky. Um, and, you know, it's, it's our job to create a safe environment where you can do that. You know, you can fail at it and it's okay. And you're gonna dust yourself off and try something new. And um, to, to be able to do that, you know, in a sports program, in a safe environment, um, I, I think is, is really, really important. So I, I'd put those two together. And then be your best. I, you know, I, I don't know. I always try and simplify sports. And, and I, I really don't think it's that complicated. I think if you work hard and work harder than your opponent, then you're going to have success. And, you know, we brag on the championships and the success that we've had. But it's really, you know, we, we do that because it, it really does point out the value of hard work. And, and that's what I'm most proud of. And I think that is, that's being your best, whatever that best may be. All right, thank you. Welcome. Oh, hi, my name is Gavin and I have a question for you. It is, what are you most excited about in joining Hillbrook? Well, and, and that's, I love that question because, you know, I'm, I'm visualizing myself, you know, next year with our students and faculty and staff and I, I think what is so exciting about that is to be in a place and in a space with like-minded people, people who have embraced, you know, the unknown and are really excited about, you know, being that founding class and the founding faculty member. Um, that feels like it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Thank you. Hi, Hi I have a question. Um, what do you think the biggest challenge will be for you over the next year? Well, you know, personally, um, our youngest son is, he'll be a senior and, and he's gonna stay in Atlanta with my wife. And so, um, you know, being in California without them, personally, that's gonna be hard, but I also think that's gonna really let me dive into the work. And, um, you know, the one thing that I know I need to spend time on is getting to understand, um, it, it, you know, locally, just e everything about interscholastic sports in the San Jose um, area. Um, and, you know, that's something that, I, it, it's not gonna be challenging, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. And, and so, I, you know, I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people and learning a lot of things and understanding culture and, and um, you, you know everything about the CIF, and um, but you know but that's going to take some time. Thank you, um, Edwin. Do you want to ask an, another question? So I think Tim, a second question here from Edwin. I don't know, maybe perhaps he's, uh, his audio is not working, is what do you think you are, are the most important qualities for coaches? Oh, that's great. Um, it, you know, so I will interview any teaching candidate that comes to campus here. I, I will be part of their interview day. And, um, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm not all that worried about X's and O's. Um, what I am looking for is someone who cares and then really someone who knows how to motivate students towards a goal. You know, the, the other piece, anyone can, you know, we, we can do a Google search for, 
you know, offensive sets or how to run a swim practice or all of those things. But I, I really think the ability to motivate students and to connect with students in a, in a real relational way and to positively motivate students, that, that's a real art and a real talent. And, um, you, you know, that's something that I'm going to look for before anything else. Gavin? Yeah, I have one more question, and it's how will you build a competitive team in the first few years when there are limited numbers of students? And I touched on this a little bit before that, you know, we're, we're going to we're going to do it the right way because there is kind of that built in patience of, um, you know, when you're in ninth grade, you should be um, competing against ninth graders. So we'll have, you know, JV programs that will be you know, age appropriate and, um, you know, we'll be forced to keep things at, you know, that proper level and really develop students as, as athletes and really focus in on that. And, you know, and part of it is kind of setting expectations of, um, of what success means. And, you know, that's really, really important. And, and you know, Mark mentioned early that I spent time at Caltech and, um, you know, Caltech has some of the smartest students in the world, and they weren't all that athletic, but the athletic piece played such a huge, huge role in developing their social skills and, you know, giving them an outlet from some really, really rigorous academics. And, you know, we didn't, our benchmark wasn't winning conference or national championships. Um, it was, you know, putting them in spots where they could have success or failure and what they did with that at that point. So, you know, I've definitely had experience um, at programs that have been at the top and those that have not. And it really is all about kind of setting expectations and defining for where you are in that moment, what that success is. And I think that's a really important thing to do. Josh. I, uh... <clears throat> How can a high school program support students who play multiple sports, including competitive club sports on outside teams? Yeah, great question. And, and, you know, I would say, you know, you start with this idea, you know, we don't own your athletic development. And you know, we've done a nice job here and kind of a shift of um, embracing that, that, you know, you know, our students are going to get great sports specific development outside of our school. And, and, you know, I think we have done that better than other schools. And that is one of the reasons. And so we can focus on some of the other things that I had mentioned. Um, and, and our coaches have also worked really well with club coaches. And, you know, our girls basketball team, we have some great soccer players and they're playing year round. And so they'll miss one or two practices a week. Um, but we make sure that we work with the club coaches so they'll be at every game. Um, our swim program, which has, you know, historically been one of the best in the state, our year-round swimmers will be at one or two practices a week. And then the rest of the time they're with their club, but they're there for every meet and they're there, at the, you know, at the state championship. And, and um, you know, our, it, it's not as if our students aren't coming to practice and they're not training. I mean, they're doing the things that they would be doing with us. They're just doing it with, you know, with someone else. And so some of it is developing those relationships with the clubs, but it's also, you know, kind of understanding that um, we're all doing this together. That's great. Well, eighth graders, thank you so much for being on here to talk to Mr. Downs and ask him such great questions. Um, you can go ahead and turn your cameras and mic off. Thank you all. And I'll turn it over to Mark. Thanks, Golly. Um, and I think Ilsa Doman, our Director of Teaching and Learning, is going to join us. Um, and Ilsa is going to, uh, there was a series of questions. And by the way, um, uh, people who are in the audience, please feel free to continue sending questions. But we've got about five or six questions. And, and I think Ilsa will help facilitate that. So uh, take it away, Elsa. All right. 
Um, well, Tim, a question that comes up a lot, and, and in fact, the first two questions that got submitted as you um, have been speaking were around um, how you will decide what the initial sports and activities will be um, for the ninth graders for this coming year. And then I'm going to sort of tack on a related question um, that someone else asked, which is that um, if, if I'm a seventh grader in the audience, so looking out one more year, um, what might I expect the opportunities to look like kind of one year in? Right. Well, and, and you know, absolutely, I, I think is understanding the realities of the numbers that we will have in the ninth grade class and making sure that we have a program that doesn't overstretch our students or facilities or um, so, you know, I've started working with Mike and Mark on, you know, on what that would look like. And, um, you know, what I'm putting together is, and it's something that I shared when I was on campus, um, it, it's just a series of criteria that, you know, we would look at for every possible sport. And it, it will include things such as, you know, is it sponsored by the CIF? You know, what is the, what are local um, competition opportunities? What are facilities that are needed to support this? Um, accessibility of the sport for our students and our families is a big piece of that. Um, accessibility of coaching, um, budget that's necessary. So, th th you know, there's a whole list of things that, um, you know, I, I want to go through and I've started to put that together, which will, and, and also in that will include what's a minimum roster size that you will need and what is um, kind of the ideal roster size. And then, you know, some of that will, you know, just from the numbers, the enrollment numbers we'll have here, that'll be, you know, really helpful in guiding what those sports can be. And then with that as a plan to, um, you know, grow the program. And all of this is, you know, identifying current interest and then future interest and um, both inside and outside the school and, um, you know, determining ways for understanding that um, with our, you know, our current eighth graders, what sports are they currently playing inside and outside of school and how we're going to be able to sustain these and make sure that, you know, we're doing it in a, um, you know, in a very safe way um, and in a modern way. And, 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 you know, part of what's factoring into this is what's going on above us in the college ranks and is the sport, you know, healthy at college or is it moving in a way that, um, you know, there really wouldn't be opportunities be beyond um, Hillbrook for our students to play. So a lot of factors will go into that, and we've just started working on that. Great. Thank you. Um, a next question that came in from the attendees here tonight is, how do you think about the role of community leagues in preparation or in preparing for high school sports? Is there a relationship with um, those community leagues and with the school? So in, in terms of community leagues and, and um, it, is that club sports and... Great question. I wondered the same thing, but I... I, I think so. I, I know the person who asked the question. I, so I, I believe they're referring to like um, NJB basketball and, you know, other... And they have... This person have, happens to have younger children, like sixth grade and below. But yeah. so I, like, how do those play into? Oh, and, and again, I think they're great. Um, and, you know, our, you know, the way we've set up the program here at Westminster that for every season, we're going to have at least one non-cut opportunity for our students. So a sport that, um, you know, anyone can participate in, um, and usually it's more than just one. And then we're going to set up our sports seasons where you're going to play three, you, you know, you have an opportunity to play three sports. Um, what our families are doing outside of that. And, um, it, you know, I, I don't think anyone should specialize at an early age in playing sports. So I'm always going to encourage from a standpoint of, you know, preventing injuries and preventing burnout that you try a lot of things and our program is going to be set up that way, but also understanding the way that a lot of these leagues are set up in a way that a lot of the club sports are set up they're doing it so they can get you in them and involved year round. Um, and, it, you know, I understand that and understand that pressure. So um, that, you know, that was a big question when I started at Westminster eight years ago. And it is one that I think we've worked through very, very well in terms of, you know, again, it's just, we, we don't own the development of our students athletically. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for sharing. Um, here's one about um, a parent who's writing about his son's experience with um, competing currently at a middle school level in track and field cross country and rock climbing and bouldering. Um, it, this child is someone quite driven also at excelling in their academic work um, and, and, and feels like they have a really high potential to compete at a high level in those sports as they grow older in high school and then into college. So can you tell us a little bit about how you think about working with um, high aptitude student athletes and also how you think generally about the relationship between students athletic development and, and academics? Well, and we absolutely see it here. And, and, and so, you know, again, this would, I, I think a lot of people would say that Westminster is the top academic school in the, in the Southeast. And um, we have, you know, and it's interesting coming out of COVID, um, we have 80% of our students participating in sports now in at least one sport. So, uh, you know, 80% of our students are, are doing at least one sport and they don't have to, it's not a requirement. And um, I think everyone will say this and it was my experience that I always, you know, the, the structure of practice and um, that, that just, it, it, it keeps you disciplined, it keeps you occupied um, and the grades tend to be higher when they're in season and when they're busy and they're structured. And, you know, I truly believe that. And, and you know, so we'll, make sure that practices are, you know, and, and, and we're doing them in a way that students are able to get home and, you know, so they're not up until 2 a.m. Um, but the structure that sports will give you, I, I truly believe makes you a better student. Thanks for that. We have another question from um, an attendee who knows a lot about the Atlanta Independent School um, kind of landscape and has worked in that and, and seen a lot of those campuses, including the campus that you're currently on, um, and is thinking about um, or is wondering about um, what you see as some exciting opportunities, but also maybe some challenges about an urban um, campus like the one that we'll have. Well, you know, it was funny. So I, I met Mike and Mark um, at the Moore building. And the first thing that I saw was in between the armory and um, what would be the academic building was that, that lot that was there um, that felt vacant and would look great with a field on it. And I, I know there's some other plans for it, but I, I honestly, so that was going into it um, and, and meeting with everyone and, and kind of trying to understand how, um, it, you know, we're going to find facilities for these sports. I seem to have initially more concern about it than those that I spoke with um, at Hillbrook. And I think some of that is, and what I've since learned in speaking with some colleagues in California, is that, you know, you know spa space in California really is, a, is such a valuable resource that it seems like everyone is, you know, you're not gonna have everything on your campus. It's not everything is going to be right there. And so there does need to be some creativity and in, in finding space and partnering and creating partnerships that will allow for you to find the proper space. But the idea of going off campus and, you know, finding a field, um, finding a pool, finding tennis courts um, seem to be um, much more common in, um, you know, in, San, in the San Jose area than where I am. I will say, you know, we've had experience with that with a number of our sports. Obviously, golf um, goes off campus and our rowing team, um, you know, they need to travel up to the river. So we've had some experience with that. Um, but, you know, that's definitely something that I feel like I saw as a greater challenge than the people that actually know the area and know what the opportunities would be. Thanks for that. Um, we have a question specifically, you just mentioned a pool, um, about whether or not you anticipate being able to create a robust aquatics program in the next two to three years. Well, in, in, you know, you look at, and, and again, I think a lot of it comes to, um, you know, what are the sports that are popular in certain areas? And um, aquatics, absolutely, water polo and swimming and diving. Um, and so that one would absolutely be on the list. And, and, you know, just in terms of generating interest and all the support around it, I would love to see 
um, us be able to, um, you know, find a way. This last question um, from the attendees is a little bit of a different flavor and it was submitted by um, a student I used to teach who's watching from home who's now them in high school themselves um, and is wondering part of the success of a high school athletic program is creating strong school spirit they write students who show up to cheer for a team, how will you create that kind of environment at Hobart high school. Well, you know when um, we walked into the armory. You know, the first thing I noticed was the overhang. And, uh, you know, I think Mike made mention of it also. I, and what I envisioned was just, you know, that's the student section. And they're going to be up there cheering their, you know, their classmates on. And, um, you know, again, I, 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 it's such an important question and such an important piece of high school athletics and even more so now because, you know, if we talk about the rise of club sports and, and you know, that really being the focus and, and kind of the means to an end, then playing for your high school, that's the affinity. That's the fun. You know, there's nothing better. You, you know, with the clubs, you're, you know, you're going to Arizona or Florida and you're playing in front of, you know, your parents and, you know, more parents um, to play in front of your classmates and your parents and your grandparents um, there is really nothing better about that. And so um, I, I think one of the things that we've found here that, you know, is good, but it can also be challenging, it, especially when we get to the spring and everybody's playing a sport. Um, it's, it's sometimes tough to feel like that, you know, we are a community, a sports community, because everyone is busy doing something. Um, it's a little bit easier in the fall when you have, you know, you've got Friday nights and football. Um, but I looked at the armory and I just thought, wow, you, you know, right there in creating an atmosphere um, and a real feeling around, you know, whether it's volleyball or basketball, um, you know, some of the sports that we could play there. Um, it felt really, really good. But that is, um, you know, kind of the affinity and, you know, it's where we started um, when Mark asked me the question about the World Cup and, you know, Last Monday was such a fun time to be on campus because everyone is wearing their red, white, and blue. And to look at the stands and, um, it, you know, at the World Cup and, you know, seeing the two nations and just what it means to everybody. Um, building community is a huge, huge piece of a high school athletic program. Thanks so much for that. Thanks, thanks, Ilsa. And, and, and Mike, this, this here, just, just for you, just for a second. Can, can you hear that? Is that only on the mic? Can people hear that? Yeah. Can you hear it? Listen closely. Takes a second. It's not only for us, Mark, but, but I can imagine it. Tim Downs Mark, can, for what? Can you sing it, Mark? Tim Downs for what? All right, that's the t-shirt, that's the slogan. Um, Tim, thank you so much for uh, joining us and for, um, and I, by the way, I, I've been getting texts on the back channel from, from parents who are like, this is so great. People are super excited um, to have you on board and, and to have you as part of our team. Um, and thank you for doing, you know, your, it's what 11 o'clock at night there now. So that, you know, thank you so much for, for staying up late and, and for doing this session with us. Um, for all of you who joined us, thank you as well um, for taking time to join us. I mean, you know, this was the final one in our um, webinar series. We will have uh, for the fall in January, we will have, I believe, one or potentially two additional webinars. We will also have some additional in-person opportunities. Um, for those of you who are outside of Hillbrook, who are applying to the high school, um, and if you have not yet connected with our Director of Enrollment Management, please do reach out. We're excited to connect with you and uh, coordinate a time for you to visit the campus and to also have a student visit day. Um, for our own families, um, there are additional opportunities in January to continue learning about the high school. Um, and Tim will be on site with us for at, at several points in the next few months. And so also for those who are particularly interested in athletics, um, you know, please uh, let me know, let Mike know, let Melissa know, and we'll make sure to coordinate time when Tim is in town um, to help you have a chance to connect with him directly. Um, so with that, and we're going to say good night to everybody again. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Ilsa, Gully, and thanks to all of our eighth graders for helping as panelists. Good night, everybody.